what's a second brain, you might ask. Imagine, on your way to campus today, you listened to a podcast and thought to yourself at several points, ah, yes, that sounds interesting and would be a great angle for my next term paper. Then, during your lunch break, you read an engaging blog post and watched a YouTube tutorial in the evening. But you've already forgotten the interesting facts from the podcast. Darn it, you really wanted to remember them. To manage the flood of information you're exposed to today, you need a system. The second brain method has accompanied me through my studies, my doctoral thesis, and while building up this and my German YouTube channel. In this video, I'll show you how you can better organize your thoughts and ideas to be even more successful in your studies and all other areas of life. And now, without further ado, welcome to Schreib. Do you know the feeling when you're trying to remember something important and it just won't come to mind? Or when you spend hours searching for a document you were sure you had saved somewhere? You watch YouTube for hours every week to educate yourself, but you wonder what actually sticks? I know this situation all too well. The flood of information we are all exposed to today can be overwhelming. Our brain is not capable of absorbing all these details and information, but can only store a limited amount of it. But here comes the good news. You don't have to keep everything in your head. The solution lies in outsourcing the task of remembering to technology. The concept of the second brain allows you to store and access information in such a way that you can easily retrieve and use it later. Then your first brain is no longer so occupied with storing information but can develop more ideas and be creative. The second brain is a term popularized by author and productivity expert Tiago Forte. In his book Building a Second Brain, he details a four-stage approach known as the code system. The first step of the system is capturing information. This process is crucial because this is where you lay the foundation for your second brain. It's about being attentive and consciously capturing information you take in, whether it is from books, lectures, movies or conversations. That means you really write down the information. Of course, not every piece of information is worth noting. Focus on what truly speaks to you or stimulates your thought process. In the context of the second brain method, you would have definitely noted down the interesting podcast facts from the introductory example. Use digital tools like Notion, Evernote or even a simple notebook to capture your thoughts and discoveries. Make notes, draw sketches, save quotes. Whatever inspires you. After capturing information, the next step is to organize it. Good organization allows you to quickly access your collected ideas and information. Create categories to sort your notes. This way, you can quickly find everything related to, for example, psychology or programming. Remember, your system should be simple and intuitive. Complicated structures often lead to frustration. In your digital system that we call a second brain, you can also always use the search function to find information even faster. The third step is about filtering out the essence of your notes. It's important to identify the core message and summarize the information in a way that is personally useful to you. Therefore, it's best if you don't just copy notes from a web page into your second brain, but instead process them in your own words once. This not only aids in understanding, but also in truly internalizing the information. Imagine you had to explain the most important points from your notes to someone else. How would you express it? This approach helps to pinpoint the essence of your thoughts. The final step is expression. This is about transforming your collected and processed information into something tangible, be it an essay, a blog post, a project or a presentation. The contents of your second brain are of no use if you don't apply them. In the phases when you are not consuming, but creating, you should always have your second brain at hand. By internalizing the code system, you turn the collection and processing of information into an active 
creative process. Thus, your second brain becomes a tool that can enrich your studies, your sports or your company forever. In addition to the code system, the para method is a crucial component of the second brain idea. Para stands for projects, areas, resources and archive. By organizing your information according to the para principle, you ensure that you always know exactly where to find and how best to use the information for specific purposes. Projects. These are short-term endeavors with a specific goal. For example, a project in your studies could be preparing for an important exam or writing a term paper. Areas. These represent long-term responsibilities or aspects of your life that require continuous attention, such as your progress in your studies or your personal development journey. Resources. Here you collect information on topics that interest you or could be useful in the future, like research papers, interesting websites or books. Archive. Everything not currently in active use, but something that might be important later ends up here. The archive serves as a kind of memory storage that you can always refer back to. The para principle organizes your digital information so that you always know where to find and how to optimally use it. In addition to his foundational book on the second brain approach, Tiago Forte has now also published a second book specifically on the para principle. It's currently on my to read list, which by the way, is part of my second brain. Now, before we get to some tips that I collected over 10 years of using the second brain approach, please consider to give this video a like if you want to see more of this type of content. Here are some tips from my nearly decade long journey with the second brain concept. They might serve you well. First, start small. Don't feel compelled to capture everything from the get go. Taking on too much too soon can lead to quick burnout due to the overwhelming nature of extensive note taking. Start by focusing on one area of your life and gather notes, ideas and insights focused on this domain. Once this becomes normal and feels effortless, introduce a second domain or area as per the para principle. Two, leverage technology. Tools such as Notion, Evernote or even basic Word documents can streamline your organization of your second brain. Explore various applications to discover the most suitable option for you. My second brain journey began with Evernote, transitioning to Notion later on. While Evernote offers simplicity, Notion demands a learning curve but presents unlimited potential. Absolute second brain enthusiasts swear by Obsidian, a sophisticated software that enables you to implement your own Zettelkasten method, facilitating a deep, interconnected note-taking approach. 3. Filter aggressively. When collecting new information, ponder its applicability in real-world scenarios. Storing an impactful quote is beneficial, yet its true value lies in future creative applications of it. Ensure that only information with a realistic potential for future use gets included in your second brain. 4. Reflect regularly. Carve out dedicated time for regular review and reflection on your amassed information. This will enhance comprehension and the connectivity between what you consume. This practice not only enhances long-term memory, but also aids in drawing connections across different knowledge areas. The greatest challenge I face with the second brain is maintaining consistent curation, which is important for maximizing the benefits of the method. And finally, share your knowledge. Actively engage in discussions about your ideas and insights with peers, as sharing perspectives can significantly enrich your understanding and creativity. For collaborative ventures, Consider making sections of your second brain available to others, allowing them to contribute to and enrich your second brain. The method that I presented to you transcends mere utility, evolving into a digital companion for lifelong learning.
after you have followed the second brain method for a year or so, you will ask yourself how you could ever have lived without one. Hence, the most important advice I have for you is straightforward. Just start.